Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to share a few tips and tricks to actually maximize your rehabilitation potential after a stroke or a neurological injury. And do watch till the end because I'm going to be sharing very useful information that may just improve your rehabilitation journey. Welcome to Basically Physio, my name is Suresh and I'm a physiotherapist. So the number one problem in the stroke rehabilitation journey is that there is just not enough repetitions or exercise being done. So in a study that was observing uh, stroke survivors in an outpatient setting, they noted that in a rehabilitation session, there would be only about 30 to 32 repetitions for the upper limb. And this is not enough at all because the number of repetitions required for meaningful change to happen in your motor recovery is somewhere around between 300 to 600 repetitions. So you can see that there's a vast difference in how many repetitions and how long uh, patients exercise for versus what is truly required to drive this change in the motor recovery. So when I say repetitions and the duration of exercise, this is what I call the dose of the exercise. What is the dose of your rehabilitation uh, exercise that you're doing? So how to increase dose, there is two ways. First is you increase the number of repetitions being done. And second is you increase the duration of the exercise being done. So I'm going to share with you five simple tips that you can incorporate right now to improve and increase the amount of repetitions that you're doing and also increase the number of times and duration that you're exercising for. So the first tip I have is called micro burst. So micro burst is what whereby you actually just do simple exercises for short durations but do it multiple times a day. This actually helps you to prevent fatigue because if you do that entire exercise in one sitting, it's going to be very tiring for you. So instead of doing 10 repetitions or 20 repetitions in one go, do about 2 to 3 repetitions for about 2 minutes every time and repeat it as many times as you can throughout the day. This will actually help you to increase the number of repetitions that you're doing while allowing you to have the rest and energy for you to continue doing exercises instead of fatiguing out. The next tip I have is called habit stacking. Habit stacking is whereby you are doing one activity and whenever you do that activity, you're actually going to remember to do a little bit of exercises here and there. So for example, if you are going to make your bread for breakfast, when you're doing that, you're just going to do a marching, marching on the spot for 30 counts. So every time you do a making your food, then you're actually going to march for 30 seconds. Another example is that if you're just sitting down to watch the TV, right before you watch the TV, you're going to do 20 knee extensions, okay? So as you're going along the day, you can actually think about what the activities that you're doing in the day and try to incorporate this kind of exercises also into right before doing your habit. And this will actually help you to increase the number of repetitions that you're doing and also increase the length and the duration of time that you're doing exercises for in a day. Because on top of your rehabilitation sessions, you're actually doing this throughout the day. The third tip I have is actually gamify your tracking. So when you're doing exercises, it is very important that you're actually tracking how many repetitions you're doing in a day and in a week. And over time, if you are increasing the number of repetitions, then that's very good. So you actually can put like a reward system for yourself. If let's say you're doing 10 repetitions now in the first week, if you are going to be able to do four, uh, 40 repetitions in week four, then you're going to reward yourself with something. So this is how you gamify your rehabilitation. You actually put some different levels in where you're going to achieve. And once you hit those levels, you're going to reward yourself. This will actually serve as a good way to motivate, motivate yourself. And also it will improve your number of repetitions and overall the duration that you spend in your exercise because you're just going to be improving week after week and month after month. So the next tip that I have is the accountability buddy. So in your stroke recovery journey, it is good if you can connect with other stroke survivors or if you just have a social circle of friends, then you can actually choose someone to be your accountability buddy. You can tell them and share with them the goals that you're aiming for and tell them that in this month you want to achieve this thing. And because you tell them, they will actually ask, back, ask you back at the end of the month. So there is a form of accountability when you're doing this and sharing your goals with your loved ones or your friends. So this is why I call it accountability buddy. And also tell them that your journey is a little bit tough for you and maybe they can even motivate you along the way. So having an accountability buddy is a very important and useful way to improve your social connection, increase the repetitions and also increase the duration of exercise that you do. And the last but the most important tip I have is actually mental visualization of your exercises. So for example, if you just do not have any energy to do any exercises on the particular day, you're just so tired, what you can actually simply do is just lie down, close your eyes, and imagine the movement that you're going to be doing for your exercises. So for example, if you're going to be doing wrist extension, so just close your eyes 
and just think about how your wrist is going to activate and move up and down. Okay, as you're doing this, believe it or not, there will be some neural connections that's happening within your brain. And it can serve as at least a form of exercise if you do not have energy to do any exercise at all. So this tip is very important and is so useful because you can do it any time of the day, especially when you're resting. On top of your daily repetitions that you're doing for your rehab, you can actually do this mental visualization and it will really help you. And in fact, it will also help you when you're doing the exercise consciously because now you know how it feels like and you're going to be doing it very deliberately. So mental visualization is very important and you can do it anytime. So these are the five tips that I have for you to increase your repetitions and duration of exercise. If you like the video so far, do consider liking and subscribing to the channel and also sign up to my weekly newsletter where I share important rehabilitation recovery tips and also some positive motivation along the way. Link is in the description below. The second problem that happens in stroke rehabilitation is the quality of the exercise or repetition that you're doing. So there's two ways to do an exercise. First, you just go through the motion, meaning you don't, you're not thinking so much, you're just moving up and down, up and down, and just doing as many as you can. Second way, which is the most important way, is to actually do it deliberately. There is a big difference between the way you do going through motion and the way you do a deliberate practice. Going through motion, you're actually not focused. You're just anyhow doing your exercise. As long as you get the repetitions in, you think that it's fine. But this is not the case because in a going through the motion form of exercise, where you're just doing it anyhow, you are likely not going to be benefiting as much as if you focus. Second is you will not be aware of all the different unhealthy compensations that's happening in your hand or your leg when you're doing the exercise. So for example, if you're doing a knee extension, if you're not conscious about it, your leg may be outwardly rotated when you're doing the exercise. And that is actually not going to be beneficial for you. So we need you to do a deliberate practice. Deliberate practice is whereby you think of the movement before doing it and also you are fully engaged in the session when you're doing it. You have an intention when you're doing the exercise and it's just not going through the motion. When you do in this way, you're going to activate a lot more muscles that are going to be firing correctly and also you reduce the chance of compensatory ha habits developing. So by doing a deliberate practice, you're actually increasing the amount of force that you're going to be generating for each repetition and also the quality of the repetition improves. So so be very mindful that when you're doing your rehabilitation exercises, you want it to be as deliberate as possible. So set an intention for each recovery rehabilitation session and in each of these, be very focused and be very sure of what you want to do. And when you're doing the exercise, do not be distracted by watching TV or listening to music. Really focus on it. Tell yourself that this exercise is going to benefit you. Really look at the muscle and the movements that's happening and the exercise that you're doing and focus on it. This is what we call deliberate practice and this is why it's going to be important for you in your recovery journey. So the last point I have to share with you is that there is a difference between the type of exercises that you're doing. So I'm going to be using terms that you may not understand but bear with me, I'm going to explain to you clearly what exactly these are. So when you're doing a movement, right, so for example, if you're just moving your elbow up like this, there is three forms of movement that can happen. The isometric, concentric and eccentric. So what does each of these mean? Isometric simply means that your muscle is contracting but the joint is not moving. So a bit funny, right? Let me explain to you. So for example, if you want your biceps to activate, you're going to force you're going to put a force or a blocking force on your on your elbow here and you're going to activate your biceps. So when you're doing this, your biceps are actually working but your limb is not moving. Okay, so this is called the isometric contraction. Isometric contractions are the most easiest way to do an exercise, followed by the next thing called concentric. Concentric is very simple, it's what you're usually doing, whereby you're just moving your hand like this. So concentric is, for example, for my biceps muscle again, there are two points of attachment for my biceps. One is at the shoulder area and one is at the elbow area. So because the muscle is attached into two ends, what happens in a concentric contraction is that it actually shortens. So when this shortening happens, that is why your hand is able to move this way. So shortening of the muscle as your limb is moving, this is what we call concentric contraction. Now the lastly, eccentric contraction is going to be a little bit confusing for you, but bear with me. Eccentric basically means that you are going to be lengthening the muscle and contracting it at the same time. So you are contracting it in a lengthening manner, not in a shortening manner. Okay. So if you are talking about your biceps again, if your shoulder, if your elbow is in this position, how you want to bring it down, as you bring it down this way, this is called the eccentric movement of the 
eccentric phase of the movement. So if you want to really make it challenging for you, what you're going to do is this hand is going to be forcing my hand to go down, but my hand is going to take its time and slowly come down. So this is really going to challenge it eccentrically. So for example, I'm really pushing this hand all this way, but on my this hand, I'm just slowly controlling it, the force, and lengthening my bicep. So you can see, it is not shortening, but it's lengthening because my arm is moving away this way. So this is what we call eccentric. So as you're starting out in a stroke recovery journey, always you can start off with isometric first, followed by concentric and then eccentric because isometric is the easiest way to do exercises. So I'm going to show you some simple variations that you can do for your ankle, knee, your hip, elbow and your shoulder. So for the ankle, I'm going to show you, I'm going to demonstrate on this leg and this is my stronger side, this is my weaker side. Okay, so for your ankle, how your isometric is going to look like is your stronger leg is just going to put it over the weaker leg and you're just trying to extend your, you're trying to flex your ankle up this way. So this is the movement that you're working at. But the isometric contraction, there is no movement. So as you put a blocking force using a stronger leg and you're, you're just going to lift up and contract the muscles. So you're contracting mainly your tibialis and tibial muscles over here. And this is called the isometric version. This is the easiest way you can do exercises. Even if you're not blocking, Sometimes you're so you're quite weak that you're actually just going to be trying to lift the, the feet off the ground and that is also an isometric contraction. So you can just focus on lifting up your ankle even if it's not coming up. This is what we call isometric and it's the most easiest way to do exercise. Next, we move on to the concentric. So concentric, you need a force or a ankle weight or some, some form of weight that is placed on your ankle so that you are able to do the concentric version. So for this, I'm just going to show with my stronger leg, I'm going to put over the weaker leg again. And since my stronger leg is pushing the feet down, my weaker feet is just going to lift it up and down. Okay, so this is what we call concentric. You're actually using the force and you're actually shortening the limb and your muscles are shortening. So this is a concentric. This is the second harder version compared to the isometric. Now moving to the eccentric version, this is the most challenging, this you will be doing in your advanced stages of your recovery journey. So in an upward position like this, you're actually going to bend your ankle up this way and you're going to use your stronger leg to push down your ankle as hard as you can, but you are on your weaker leg, you're controlling the ankle coming down. Okay, you can go ahead and try this, it's actually going to be very difficult for you in the early stages. So ankle up this way, stronger leg pushing it down but your weaker leg is actually really controlling the ankle from coming down. So instead of just falling down because of the force, it's going to be slowly coming down. So as you can see, within one exercise is held, there's three variations that you can do. So if you are able to do these three variations for all your muscles, you're actually going to be increasing your repetitions and duration of exercise. Now we're moving to the knee. So isometric contraction for the knee, what it look like is this is my weaker leg, and this is my stronger leg. So stronger leg is going to give a blocking force over here. And my weaker leg, you're just going to try and extend your knee, but you're not going to move. So your quads area, this area that's going to be firing up, you can actually feel it. Okay, as you're trying to fire it up, you'll start, you start to feel contraction over this area. And this is called the isometric. So isometric, you're contracting without any movement. Okay, next is the concentric. Concentric is whereby you place a, either an ankle weight or some bag of flour or something on your ankle or a terra band also tied to the anchor point or you can just use your stronger leg to actually have a force that is going to be pushing it down. So you're just going to extend your leg this way and come back down. Okay, so this extending because you're shortening your quads muscle and you're having a force, this is the concentric variation of your knee extension. Okay, now coming to the eccentric, the more harder one, okay? So your eccentric, you're going to straighten out your leg first, okay? And then place your stronger leg over, and you're just going to control the leg from coming down slowly, okay? So straighten it, and put your stronger leg over, and you're just going to control it coming down slowly. The slower you do for eccentric, the more challenging it is, and the more beneficial it's going to be for strengthening your muscles. Now coming to your hip, this is my weaker side, and this is my stronger side, okay? For your hip, you're going to use your stronger hand to give the resistance force. So for isometric hip flexion, right? Okay, the isometric, your leg is not going to be moving. So your stronger hand is going to place some force over your weaker leg and your knee and your hip is just going to try to move up, but it's not going to move because your hand is blocking it. This is the isometric version of the exercise. Okay, 
Next, moving on to concentric version. Concentric is whereby there is shortening happening. So your stronger hand is going to give a little bit more force now and your weaker leg is going to resist, going to go through this resistance up and down. Okay, so this is giving a, extend, uh, giving a downward force and your hip is just moving against the resistance. This is a concentric variation. So this is a step up from isometric. Next is the eccentric, which is the harder one. So for the eccentric version, you're going to start off at the top here and using a stronger hand to push down your hip, okay, but you're going to go down as slowly as you can. So instead of collapsing down like this, you're going to be really controlling and lengthening the muscle in the eccentric phase. So really control, and you will start to feel the burn in the eccentric movement because this is the more challenging version of the exercise. Now coming to the elbow for your biceps mainly, we're going to show you, I'm going to show you the isometric for the elbow. So for the isometric, this is my weaker hand, this is my stronger hand. So stronger hand is going to place a resistance over the elbow here, and you're just going to try to flex your hand, but it's not going to move. But you're going to feel your biceps activating. So you're going to flex your hand like this, and it's not going to move, and this is the isometric contraction. Next, for the concentric contraction, you're going to press down and just move like this. This is the concentric contraction whereby your arm is moving closer to your body and for the eccentric you're going to start here and this hand you're just going to pry your hand open you're going to just pry this open but this is going to be slowly controlling it okay so stronger hand is going to open but your weaker hand is just resisting it slowly and really controlling the hand from coming down okay so really controlling the hand from coming down this is the eccentric so once again, eccentric is the more harder variations. So only in the advanced stages of your recovery journey and when you have decent strength, then, when, then that's when you're going to do the eccentric version. So next for your shoulder, you're going to do shoulder flexion, okay? So same thing, your stronger hand here is going to place a force over here and your shoulder is going to try to move forward but it won't be able to move. And this is where we do the isometric contraction. Okay, so you're going to go up this way and this hand is blocking. So since it's blocking, you're going to be really doing the isometric contraction first. Okay, next you're going to do a concentric contraction whereby this hand is going to give you a force here and you're just going to go up as much as you can and come down slowly. So this is the concentric. And for eccentric, whereby you have decent strength in your shoulder and you want to make it even more stronger, you're going to hold your hand like this and your stronger hand is just going to push down this hand, but your weaker hand is going to really slowly bring it down. Okay, so up here, your stronger hand is going to push down, but your weaker hand is really controlling it and lengthening it slowly. So for isometric exercises, you want to hold it ideally for 10 seconds when you're not moving that shoulder, hand, or your leg. Hold it for 10 seconds and do as many repetitions as you can. For the eccentric and the concentric version, variations of the exercise, I want you to do as many reps as you possibly can. Also be very mindful of your fatigue, especially if you're doing the eccentric versions because eccentric can really fatigue you out very fast. So only do it in the advanced stages whereby you have good strength on the limb and you want to make it more stronger. For concentric, it's pretty much all the normal exercise that I've shown you before. So just do as per what I recommended. But if you can do more, do more because you because if you watch this video fully you'll understand that stroke survivors are not getting enough repetitions for their rehabilitation journey so i've come to the end of the video do check out these other videos if you want to learn more and i'll see you in the next one